Yo, what up, Street Talks? Eric Kim. All right, so thought. So this one is about fresh air and maybe temperature irregularities or whatever. So you know, I woke up this morning and like <laughs> one of the blessings of actually living in this like you know luxury tiny apartment condo thingy is that um, the building is like always 74 degrees. <laughs> no matter how cold or hot it is outside. And so the, the benefit is obviously when I'm freezing my balls off and I could come back to the apartment, it's nice and cozy and uh, that's good. But the downside is certainly if a human was always in a thermoregulated 74 degrees, that's probably not good for our physiology. So kind of let me, let me explain. So. Staying alive? Morning. I like your hat. Are you in the military? No, no, it's just <laughs> styling. Yeah, Bye. You're welcome. Is that your car? That's mine, yeah. Yeah, that's badass. Man, you All right, one. You take a picture of it. Well, yeah, one one of these days I'll have it. How do you like it? It's nice. It's really nice. How, how it's fast nice is it? It's a, it's a V6. It doesn't go crazy. Okay, much. dude. It, it does. Uh, it's good on gas and everything. Dude, but, black on black, baby. Yeah, it's Yo, nice. Yo, that's like Knight Rider status, right? baby. All right, Batman. See you later, dude. All right, so certainly uh, life is far more interesting when you leave the, the apartment is uh, generally just. So why is it that life inside doors is so boring? So I think generally the problem is when you're indoors all day, you're essentially your physiology or your natural faculties, your body essentially goes to sleep and you essentially become sedated. There's, there's a notion I call, I call it like nation of sedation. So even before, before COVID, the, my biggest critique of American society was all right, next time I get a car, it's going to be a V12 gas guzzler. All right. So, um, so nation of sedation. So the, my biggest critique of just, I guess, uh, society in general is that we essentially become, we self, you know, this is pre COVID, right? We've essentially pre-sedated ourselves with entertainment, media, shopping, and all these uh, superfluous distractions. Now, I don't think there's like a necessarily a moral evil or wrong associated with these things, but just basically my critique is that essentially like all this entertainment and media and social media and stuff like that essentially pacifies us and prevents us from maximally thriving to our own potential uh, limit and now with covid you know it's got even worse it's like yo we was always we were always already plugged into the matrix now we're kind of like on matrix 2.0 so a little bit uh a little bit concerning for for humanity but anyways let me continue so assuming you're in your cozy apartment or bunker of a house whatever in the burb somewhere with a perfect 74 degrees now the downside is Certainly your bodily faculties uh, go to sleep, meaning um, like I think when there's actually um, an irregularity or extremes between cold and hot, I think for our bodies and physiologically is actually better because it essentially wakes us up. And this is also the reason, I mean, a lot of my ideas are inspired by Nassim Taleb and Anti-Fragile, but this is also the reason why I don't run because to me running is like moderate exercise, which I personally don't believe in, but I'm more of a walker. I like to walk. I like to walk and then I like to live heavy, heavy weight. So, you know, what he calls the barbell strategy to life. And I think life when you barbell it is, is far more interesting because when you barbell life, 
then I think it actually makes you stronger and tougher, more awake. And actually I think physiologically it makes you happier, more joyful and more sprightly and energetic. So, you know, thinking about fresh air and stuff like that. So even going for a walk, I think, is probably the ultimate uh, entertainment you could do, right? Because, you know, there's like a freaking 10 trillion things you could see. People walking their dogs, you know, see the light, the floors, the water, the sun. And there's like probably a quadrillion different things happening to your body when you're kind of out. So, you know, we're getting exposed to UV radiation. We're getting exposed to, you know, the you could feel the gust of the wind in your face. You could, uh, you know, even when you look at a tree, there's like 10 trillion, you know, fractal patterns you could even see in the tree. So that's interesting. And even like there's so much intelligence in walking where you're walking, you could feel the, the, the uneven surface of the rocks. And I think there's a lot of hidden intelligence in our feet that we haven't yet actually discovered. So that's, uh, that's obviously a good thing. Uh, you could hear ambient noise like, you know, dumpster trucks, you know, people walking their dog and stuff like that. And so I think actually one of the greatest joys in life is essentially to be outdoors. And a life when you're indoors all day, to me, is the most miserable life. Um, and man, even, even me talking with you right now, like just going on a few minutes of a walk outside my apartment, I already feel like a quadrillion times better. So now I think um, because of the lockdown and stuff like that, a lot of people is feeling depressed because they're just indoors all day. And I think actually my theory is, it's actually a physiological depression because once again, like when I was in my apartment, I woke up this morning, I was just kind of like hot and stuffy and just, I felt kind of like cabin feverish or like whatever. And I just felt like I really wanted some fresh air and actually wanted a little bit of a colder temperature. And so this is also another hidden thing that I've discovered is one of the, the good things is, um, taking regular cold showers or even going on walks, um, or even going on walks around the block is uh, is good because, you know, like even me, right? I just go on a, wa on a walk with just a t-shirt on and even my shark shoes. No socks. They're just essentially slippers. So I could just, I have zero friction in terms of just like slipping them on and just piecing out. And so I feel like this is actually uh, a really good strategy because the more friction necessary for you to leave your house, go on a walk, the worse. Like, you know, you gotta put on your sweater, you gotta put on your socks, your running shoes, whatever. I mean, yo, just put on like the most lazy people clothes. You know, put on some freaking flip-flops and socks, whatever you got on, you know, your sweats, whatever your house clothes are. You don't need to wear like fitness clothes to just like leave the house, right? And so I would just encourage you in so far as you can, I mean, these are practice suggestions is um, try to walk yourself at least five times a day. I mean, treat yourself like a dog. You know those massive dogs that need to be walked like 50 times a day? Maybe treat yourself like a dog. So to think about dog physiology and human physiology is obviously very different because we're not wolves. But, you know, I think during COVID, it looks like the dog walkers are probably the most mentally sane right now because they you know have an excuse to go out and walk their dogs and so certainly us humans are more important than dogs so just ultimately walk yourself and you'll probably feel a little bit more joy